Why do you think he's so big? Growing. I mean, he's a racehorse, but he's not the track finish. January? It's growing. He's just four. So he's going to get a lot bigger. Hey, how you guys doing? My name's Patrick. I work for Devaku, a saddle company you guys have probably heard of. I also died here with Adrian. But uh, I am here to sort of give you some small insight about the purpose of saddle fitting for both horse and rider. And things that you guys can generally look at when you're riding on your own. So you don't always have to have someone there with you. You can figure it out sometimes on your own as best you can to help correct both your own riding, your own mechanics and the comfort of the horse. So there's several main factors that I am looking at as objectives in my work, which these are checking boxes of both horse and rider. So first of all, we want comfort and accessibility for the horse's own anatomy, right? You don't want anything about the saddle to be interfering with the way and the potential for them to move. Um, so we're talking about the spine, the scapula or the shoulder, the withers, you know, anything that's going to inhibit their ability to move around with you uh, or inhibit your ability to communicate with them. So there, I look at the saddle as a sort of conduit of communication between horse and rider. So you are able to speak to them through your leg and your aids via the saddle, right? So in order to enable you to do that, the saddle also has to be balanced as in it is not putting you in any specific position. So if a saddle is poorly balanced, as in the cantle is too low, you're gonna get thrown back. If the pommel is too low, you're gonna be thrown forward. So everything about it needs to put you at a baseline. And so if your balance is incorrect to begin with because of your tact, then the best you're ever gonna be getting is fighting to have a neutral position, which that way you can never develop your you can never get further with that. Uh, and then for you, also the fitting of the saddle, right? So you need to be able to fully access yourself in that. So if there's something about the size or the shape of the flap or the size of the seat that is preventing you from fully accessing yourself, then same thing. You're not gonna be able to communicate with your horse in a proper way. <clears throat> All right, um, so let's take a look at this fellow in this side. So this is a monoflap saddle used for cross country or jumping. I'm sure you guys are familiar with that type of saddle because you ride here. But uh, you know, it's only got the single flap, no sweat flap. So it's affording the rider quite, you know, direct closeness of contact and, uh, and enabling you to really get your leg down around the horse too. So for this guy, some of the things that we're looking at, so look how prominent his scapula is right here, right? For a young fellow who's still growing, he's got a fairly prominent shoulder. Uh, so that's something that's gonna be need to be taken into account if we were gonna make a saddle frame, right? And to make Patrick's life hard, I brought him a four-year-old colt, a four-year-old mare that's built completely differently, and a six-year-old. <laughs> Almost done. Um, can we bring him up to as close as possible? <clears throat> All right, so one of these main factors that I was just talking about is his shoulder. So this isn't good for him because it's totally pinching and clamping down on your shoulder. Now, especially a young guy, right? So she's trying to teach him how to go for it. But if he's got this that's interfering with him, now, if, if, you can come, if you guys want to kind of come in a little closer so you can really see this, now, you can see my hand in here, I can barely 
already moved, right? So there's no give for this guy between the paneling of the saddle and his shoulder. So that's going to continuously bother him. Now this is a little bit harder to see, but you can also see that these panels are ill-adjusted for him, right? So under here, you can see right here that there's gapping. We call that bridging. So the point of the panels, especially these big broad ones, is for even pressure distribution on the horse's back, right? You don't want your weight going to one specific point of the horse, otherwise it might cause some soreness. Now, so what's happening here is very tight on the shoulders, then there's no contact of the paneling in between here, and then the contact becomes very strong again right here. So what's going to happen is your weight's in the saddle, it's going to crush down on your shoulders and then poke on the back, on his back. So he is going to be uncomfortable. It's not, it can lead to back soreness if it's extended period of time. So, so that's wrong for him, right? So totally different kind of saddle. This is your more classic hunter jumper saddle, uh, you know, the double flap. But this one has certain modifications that are well suited to a guy like him. So I'm going to explain why. Let me put it on. Gosh, you got all the ladies' attention. <laughs> <laughs> see that the shoulders, I can easily run my hand through here. Whereas before, there was no give at all. So see if I sort of lift these panels out, there's a whole bunch of room in here. That means his scapula can move back and forth as he's going forward. <coughs> now there's plenty of space above the withers, the sides of the withers, and then if we uh, turn them to the side again, the paneling is touching all the way around on him. So there's no area on these panels that doesn't have contact with him. So that means better comfort for him. Now, and then if we can turn him to face away as well. So the color of this saddle, it's not only allowing the spine to be free, but then the ligaments on either side of the spine. So quick examples of a saddle 
when you're looking at something quite wrong or something that's baseline pretty good, right? So those are good places to start. Keeping those things in mind. What's happening with the shoulder? What's happening with the withers? And, uh, or the panels covering the horse's back. And then we start to talk about you, right? So let me do side profile. So the easiest way for you to be aware that a saddle is not going to mess with your position intrinsically is are the pommel and the cantle along the same horizontal line. So now that's one, that's a factor of this one that's maybe not that great for you, right? So look at how high the cantle is compared to the pommel, right? So what's going to happen to your average rider is they're gonna to get tossed a little bit forward. So that means sometimes your knees will clench as you get pitched forward, you know, your lower leg can swing. Baseline, your position is not gonna be that great. And so whatever you're doing in the ride, you're not gonna be focusing on the best communication you can have with the horse. You're gonna be focusing on how can I just ride normally right now? And that's not really good for development. All right, next guy.